Hello everyone, my name is Kishan and I'm bringing you Gems of Thought series. Consider these to your corrective and preventive actions, aka CAPAS, or deviation investigation, feature human errors or employee errors as the root cause too often? Do your CAPAS end up dead in the water because of that? Or perhaps you are not sure as to how you can deal with human errors as the root cause? Well, if this is the case, this video is for you. Human errors are mistakes caused by personnel involved in the process that lead to undesirable outcomes. They tend to be cited in various terminologies, for an example, human error, employee error, mistake, employee lapse, careless mistakes, etc. So watch out for any of those root cause terminologies that are ultimately masquerading as human errors. It is the most common and frequently cited root cause because after all, once upon a time, someone wise must have said to err is human. And interestingly, nearly all of these kappas end up having a follow-up action of retraining. So the natural question is, is there all there is to it or can we dig a little deeper in human errors? Well, let's at least try. When we really think about it, we will see that human errors are merely symptoms of deeper root causes. Why? Well, that's because there is often always an underlying reason making humans err. We just do not realize these. And why is that? That's easy. That's because we have not asked the questions, what made human make the error? So, in a nutshell, if the definition of corrective action is elimination of root cause of the underlying issue, and the definition of preventive action is the elimination of root cause of potential issue in the future, how can we claim to implement corrective action or preventive action if we have not pinned down the cause in the first place? Because human error is just a symptom. And so, when we run with the blanket root cause of human error and blanket corrective action as retraining, we run these two risks. First is the false sense of security of having already fixed the causes of the issue while they pretty much remain alive. While the second is the recurrence of the same or similar deviations in future, leading to more compliance issues. And obviously, we do not want either of those. Before we talk about human errors further, let's take a step back and look at human failures in general. So human failures are of two kinds. First are violations. These are deviations caused deliberately. Basically, somebody is doing something willfully. It can be fixed by disciplinary actions. Second type of human failures are human errors that we are talking about. They, by definition, are errors made indeliberately. Let's resume our discussion on human errors. So, whenever we stumble upon human errors, we can classify these further into four categories. Either an error is an omission error, which means somebody forgot to do something, or a commission error, which means somebody did the task but did it incorrectly. The third is sequence error, when somebody messed up the sequence, or it could be a timing error, which means the task was performed either too slow, too fast, too early, or too late. Now, let's look at some of the real root causes responsible for the symptom of human errors. As you can see on the screen, when you ask the question why human made the error, you can come up with various actual root causes. It could be fatigue from the workload, led by staffing issue or absenteeism or unusual volume of work, or it could be infrastructure or resources dearth, or perhaps environmental distractions in the workspace. It also could be training issues such as total absence of training, less frequency of training or ineffective material or delivery of training. The actual root cause can also be HR issues or grievances. It could also be the requirement to multitask or perhaps communication issues such as lack of communication or inefficient communication or even procedure related issues such as procedures not being clear, procedures not being adequate or procedures being too complicated. Additionally, it could also be lack of supervision which is proactive supervision or retroactive supervision. And surely there may be other root causes not listed here depending upon your organization that might be responsible for the symptom of human error. 
So at the end of the day, what is the bottom line and what are the takeaways? First of all, issue owners and approvers need to stop forcing retraining as the default actions and human error as the final root cause. Sure, retraining can be your corrective action, but only when it fits. Second, when you encounter human error in Kappa investigation, ask what led to human making the error and do a better root cause hunting. And of course, this will lead you to interviewing the human involved in the human error, but remember to interview and not interrogate. Because within human error, more focus is on the error and not on the human. Now third, once you have pinned down the actual root cause, shape your corrective and preventive actions and address the factor precisely. Fourth, analyze the aggregate data of human error periodically and determine if there is a trend or a pattern. Address the trend by more systemic improvement if required. Well, I hope you have found this content useful and you are better equipped to handle human errors in Kappa if you were not already. Thank you very much for watching.